Right, okay, guys. So, um, I'm going to show you um, how to deal with cracks and fluffy cracks. No rude puns here, please, folks. I know that may sound a bit rude, but yes, we have cracks and we have fluffy cracks. So, obviously, there's various ways around repairing these sort of things. And I'm just going to sort of show you, I'm not going to actually physically show you how to repair it, but I'm going to tell you sort of processes so that you can understand it better if you're sort of doing leather repairs and it's sort of been something that you're stuck with and you actually want to do it then we can sort of explain to you how to do it and obviously I'm going to do a little bit of colouring for you I haven't got much time today so this is a very quick sort of educational thing obviously this this is a sofa um base of a sofa on a stressless chair and you can see this looks really really bad and this particular section here has been coloured already and as you can clearly see it looks absolutely brand new and it feels beautiful and soft so it's really cool um, so I'm just going to show you what we mean by different cracking this is obviously on a very old um, classic car seat I'm also going to tell you there's two different leathers we've got here um, the, the classic car seat and this leather they're two totally different leathers they're both pigmented leathers but I'm going to explain to you the differences between these two leathers. They're from two different er eras, obviously. Um, this is obviously a classic car seat, and this is obviously a modern stressless chair, but they're both pigmented on the surface, I will add. But one is a veg tanned, and the other is obviously a traditional dyeing method um, and traditional tanned method, and then painted with a lacquer. The classic car seat is what we call veg tanned leather. It's then got a pigment coat on the surface, with no lacquer on it whatsoever. Obviously, everybody would say classic cars leathers lasted a hell of a lot longer than what modern leathers do. They were actually thicker. Um, and obviously, they had more paint on the surface. There was no lacquer on there. So it was a different type of painting system that went on there. Probably a solvent paint. You know, it's obviously a solvent paint that's gone on there rather than a waterborne paint like we get on all modern lacquers today on modern items like these are here. So let's look. Dealing with cracks and fluffy cracks. Here we've got natural sort of lines in the leather that you can see here when my finger is here. All these are natural sort of lines, just like you've got obviously on our hands, um, natural lines. Obviously when you've got a painted surface and this is painted over, when that dries out, obviously it's going to crack in these lines. It's, it's amazing how often people say to us, can we fill these cracks in? Well, no. Can you imagine if you started having all plastic surgery done on your face and you've got all your face pulled back, you're going to end up looking like a whip whippet doing 300 mile an hour down a motorway. Um, you know, your ears are going to be back, your, your skin's going to be pulled back. It's like you're in a jet turbine car and, you know, having the life sucked out of you. So, no, you can't fill all those in because eventually they will re-show through and it's going to be obvious that they show back through again for you. So with these sort of things, when you start prepping this surface here you're going to remove all the color on this surface which is going to reduce down some of this cracking that you see here then you can deal with those with like um like a like a sort of flexible filler type product rather than like a thicker heavier filler um, and just deal with them with like a sort of flexible filler so first of all how can i tell this leather is a different leather to this one here and how can you tell that when you're looking at a classic car all classic cars which are connolly leather and the majority of them prior to 1980 were Connolly leather. How can you tell? Well, on the back of the leather, as you can clearly see, it is brown. So this is a veg tanned leather, which means it's dyed with natural vegetable extracts like bark or plant material, tannings and stuff like that. And then it's painted on the surface. So it doesn't matter whether this is um, a red seat, blue seat, black seat, you know, yellow seat, pink seat, purple seat. It will always be black uh, always be brown on the reverse so that you understand that it's always brown on the reverse that's how you tell that this is a Connolly leather interior so you know you, you're dealing with something that's genuine and it's a Connolly leather so these sort of finer cracks as I say these can be done with like a flexible filler when you get into your fluffy cracks and we start getting involved and get into them this here you can sort of see it's all gone fluffy and it's very very warm which is a typical sort of bolster wear um, getting in and out of a car. Now these are obviously, you know, as you can see, they're really, really fluffy here. Um, and, and that's obviously all the sort of collagen fibers of the skin. Um, and as you can sort of see here, this is all the collagen fibers of the skin that's poking up. So these 
need to be dealt with. So those would have to be done with like a sort of binding solution. So that would bind those back down, make them very, very stable so that you can give it a light sand. Once you've done that, you can then go on to the next stage of putting in a flexible filler or a heavier filler in there. So that's how you would sort of deal with fine cracking compared to fluffy cracks on your seat. Obviously things like tears and things like that. This is a very brittle old seat that we've got to restore for, for um, a magazine. Um, so this, again, th these would have to be bonded from the back. We're going to use leather to bond from the back. So you're going to get the leather in behind it, glue these back down, and then we can put a flexible filler into these sort of areas as well. It's in quite a bad way. Um, and as you can sort of see, we've got a lot of damage down here as well, which we've obviously got to repair all that. And again, you can see it's all brown on the reverse. So you can tell it's a Connolly hide. Now these, um, you can tell these are a traditional pigmented hide. I'll have to show you on the back of this one here. So you can sort of see this one here and you can sort of see what I mean so you can tell. So obviously the back of this particular one, you have to excuse me while I turn this up. So let me try to get rid of some of the foam that's on the back of it. And then you can see, hold on. You can see there where the colour of the hide, just on my finger here, just the tip of my finger, there, it's still the same colour underneath as it is on the top surface. So you know that it's, um, you know, a painted leather. So again, this is another piece of leather here, if I can find any leather that's exposed on this particular seat. There, there you go. Look. So it's the same colour on the top as it is on the bottom, if you look here, you know, to here, it's the same colour. So it's dyed through. So if you, there you go, here's another piece here, a purple leather. As you can see, it's blue and purple, so you know that it's a painted leather. So you know it's not a Connolly leather interior that you, you're dealing with. Connolly leather is always brown on the back. So let's have a look. Let's do a tiny bit of colouring. Let's zoom right in so you can see what we're doing here. So applying colour um, is relatively easy for those that have never done it. And obviously in a tannery they would put like a, a base coat down, then a pigmented coat and then a very, very clear coat of lacquer. So that you understand, um, clear coats of lacquers on automotive leather, you're talking you know, microscopically thin, um, absolutely microscopically thin, probably 0.5 micron, um, 150 micron is the maximum that you're going to get between primer, paint and lacquer, because it's got to be 0.15 mil thickness on the surface and no greater than that to be cored a genuine leather item. You can still have leather, if you've got more than 0.15mm thickness on the surface, it's not allowed to legally be called leather. So obviously, putting on colour, this is just a base coat, this isn't going to be a genuine colour, so don't get concerned that we're painting it wrong. So you're just going to wipe this into the surface first of all, to get it to, into all of the little nooks and crannies on, on the surface. Just simply wipe it in like so. It'll dry very, very, very quickly. So we've obviously prepped all this seat. We've got a little bit of a repair to do on this because we've got a button missing here, which um, Anne's going to get sorted out and take the cover off and sew it all in tomorrow. So we've re re reduced all the cracking down on here by removing all the surface colour and um, coating on the surface to get us back to the condition where we've not removed every ounce of colour, but sufficiently so that you don't dry the skin out. Because if you remove too much, you're going to dry the actual hide out and you know get all the collagen fibres exposed so it completely dries up if you don't want to do it. So it dries very, very quick. Excuse the noise. So that's dried quite quickly, as you can tell. Um, and then what you would then start to do to get the colour on there, you can start to build the colour up by stiffening the colour on. The reason for stiffening is it gives you a, a slight surface texture, not that you can feel it or anything like that, or even really see it, but it just gives a slight surface texture and gets it into all, deep into all the grain of the leather, so you know you're colouring right to the bottom of the grain of the leather. Just slowly stipple this colour on like so. As I said, it's a very quick educational thing today. It's just something that we want to try to help people do um, and get people to understand that we, you know, we've obviously got our IDA Open Day on the 12th of June. We just wanted to try to give people some insight that are obviously IDA members. Obviously we want to attract non-IDA members to the Open Day. Um, it's just to give people some insight that you know, it is a very good, valuable source of information to learn and to help 
obviously share the event to get like, the wider audience to know about the IDA and about what the IDA stands for, how we all help each other. You know, we are, we're all a big family, we're all helping each other, and that's what it's all about. And, you know, you can sort of see the transformation there. It's, it's quite amazing. Um, you know, from like the non-painted, a little bit of a primer coat, and then a single coat with a sponge. Obviously, we would put a second coat on there and then spray, and you would end up with a finished item just like this one is here like this and obviously with leather you can paint leather any color you wish so as you can clearly see this seat has gone black and orange and we've done sort of varying sort of things here on this one and this one's all being masked up to do a rather weird pattern on it but you can literally paint leather any color you wish um, and this sort of gives you a little bit of an insight here into some skins that we have that people look at and can see um, from wolfish to stingray ostrich and caiman and eel and salmon and this is obviously an alligator skin here um, and then we've got sharks water snakes beaver tails um, and there's a lizard up there um, and obviously this big one here is a python so there's all sorts of varying things and we have all these sort of tools here which measure the thicknesses of leather and stuff like that as well um, oh they're my biscuits sorry um, yeah they're not leather so yeah I mean you can sort of see you know these sort of things here the various sort of things that we've done you know it's, it's amazing what you can do with leather so anybody that wants to know anything please inbox me i am here to help and that's what it's all about so thanks very much for watching guys hope you found it useful anybody that wants to know any more in-depth details about repairing cracks and tears and scuffs and things like that on leather just inbox me or ask here on the portal for members and be more than happy to help thank you very much guys lots of love see you later